A very warm welcome to the Amersham Methodist Circuit YouTube channel and to this time of Sunday worship for Palm Sunday. It hardly seems possible that this is our second Palm Sunday since we first went into lockdown. My name is Adam Wells and I am the Superintendent Minister of the Amersham Circuit. So let us be quiet. As Jesus went into Jerusalem, the crowd cried, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We're now going to have week six of our Lent liturgy with Malcolm and uh, Bridget Appleby and this week with Matt as well. O oh Lord our God, we are here journeying in Lent and here are palms. With shouts and acclamations, we welcome this day. We have walked through Lent and now proclaim, praise God, bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. O oh Lord our God, we journey with you. A journey of hope and despair, a journey of tears and laughter, a journey of doubt and belief, a journey of support and rejection. May we shout Hosanna, and never shout crucify. O Lord our God, we journey with you. We add palm crosses and palm branches and a donkey to our Lenten cross. And then we listen to Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Ride on, ride on in majesty, hark all the tribes, Hosanna cry. Your humble beast pursues the robe with palms and scattered garments strong. We continue to praise God with the hymn number 88. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation.
And now let us pray. Alongside the crowds in Jerusalem, we would cry, Hosanna, with the old and the young, the rich and the poor. We would cry, Hosanna, Hosanna to our Lord, Hosanna to our King, Hosanna to the one who was sent to save us. We would cry Hosanna, not just on this Sunday, but on every Sunday in the year. Hosanna to our Lord, our King, to Jesus. Amen. A prayer of confession. For the times when we are easily led, forgive us. For the times when our decisions are poor, forgive us. For the times when we fall short of your expectations for us, forgive us. For we would hear again the words that Jesus, who rode into Jerusalem on that first Palm Sunday, declares to each of us, saying, Your sins are forgiven. Amen. And a collect prayer for today. Eternal God, in your tender love towards the human race, you sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take our flesh and to suffer death upon a cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and share in the glory of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our readings today concern crowds. First of all, the crowd in Jerusalem that welcomes Jesus on that first Palm Sunday. And Mary from our church at Presswood is going to read for us. Our first reading is from Mark chapter 11, the first 11 verses. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and he said to them, go into the village opposite you. And as soon as you have entered it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and found the colt tied by the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, what are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded. So they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into Jerusalem, and into the temple. So when he had looked around at all things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. We echo that reading with the traditional Palm Sunday hymn, number 262 in Singing the Faith, All Glory, Lord and Honour.
now we have our second reading, another crowd, but this time the crowd of Good Friday, which would condemn Jesus. Again, Mary is going to read for us. And now, Mark chapter 15, verses 6 to 15. Now at the feast, he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whoever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he had always done for them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, What then do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out, cried out again, saying, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. This is the word of the Lord. We turn now to Seeing the Faith, number 272, The Servant King. From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our world, your glory not to be served, but to serve, and give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to
Now may I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's begin by trying to visualise that scene on the first Palm Sunday in Jerusalem. Just by examining what went on, we can learn so much about Jesus and especially about the crowd. First of all, think about the crowd. From the way in which it was described, it sounds as if it was a big one. Many people walking with Jesus, processing into Jerusalem with Jesus at their centre. And there were the garments spread on the road, showing that the crowd cared for Jesus. They were taking care that the colt did not hit a stone and throw him off. At the same time, they were also a sign of homage and respect, albeit perhaps to us a strange one. I always think it's rather like the young romantic spreading his jacket over a puddle so that his lady does not have to walk in the water. What greater sign of respect and homage could the crowd have prayed to Jesus than this one? The palm branches, a sign of jubilant welcome, the sort of welcome that would be reserved for someone who was of great importance, the sort of person who would be able to do the great things that they expected of Jesus, the sort of person who would not let them down. Perhaps it was a bit like the flag waving that goes on at a victory parade, only in this case it was a victory that had not yet been won. Jesus was going to defeat the Romans and set Israel free. The shouts of Hosanna and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus was a king of the line of King David. He was to be the Messiah. So, of course, it was going to be him that would drive out the Romans. In all of this, amidst all of the commotion, there is Jesus riding on a donkey. To ride a horse would be a sign that you were someone important. Yet Jesus rides the most humble of beasts. In 1917, General Allenby got off his horse before entering Jerusalem so as not to be seen as a conquering king. And so we see Jesus as a king, but yet also in his humility and humanity. And so what a contrast between the crowd on Palm Sunday and the crowd on Good Friday when Jesus is put to death. Instead of shouting Hosanna and blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord with joy and gladness, they are stirred up against him and shout, crucify him. Like some kind of demented mob when the local team has lost and they have it in for the opposition. The clothes of Good Friday are the clothes that are stripped off the back of Jesus and the clothes that create argument after he's been put to death not the clothes of respect and honour. The Son of God is being put to death like a common criminal and the thing that the soldiers find most valuable about him is his clothes. The only branches that get a mention are those of the thorn bush which are used to mock Jesus, to give him a crown of thorns. How strange that in their fury and in mocking Christ, they make for him a crown, for he is a king. I know not all of those images were in the quite short reading that I had Mary do today, but I figured we knew the Good Friday accounts well enough. And so which of these two crowds are we going to be? Those on Good Friday who condemn Christ to death? No time for the man of peace who does not struggle to get free, who does not make a fuss, but goes quietly and with dignity. 
the sort of person who is easily led, who is prepared to let someone else make up his mind for him, who is quite happy to go along with the masses, the sort of person who is angry, perhaps because Jesus proved not to be the powerful earthly warrior who was going to throw out the Romans and therefore who was disillusioned and prepared to take revenge. We can speculate on the motives of a crowd that was stirred up. On the other hand, do we want to be like the crowd on Palm Sunday, welcoming and praising Jesus? Because it's the popular thing to do, happy to go along with whatever the majority wanted and glad to be a part of a large and lively group. It is very easy to do what you feel is right if no one opposes you while you are doing it. There's something about safety in numbers to say the least. The people who have the real courage are those who dare to stand up and to say no. This week was the anniversary of the death of a man who stood up for the people, Oscar Romero, put to death violently. But surely it was the same people in both of these crowds who were easily led and willing to take part in anything that was fun and was popular. The same people, I'm sure, who were fickle and could not in fact make up their own mind apart from those who were particularly committed to following Jesus or to trying to destroy Jesus, who would have been a part of both crowds. We cannot really talk about there being two crowds. We have to talk about there being one group of people on two separate occasions, the people who were in Jerusalem at this time. But rather than this, do we not want to do to be more like the one who was at the centre of the attention on both of these occasions? The man who rode on to death and resurrection and who truly is a king, although not in the way in which the people of Jerusalem thought. Humble, not putting himself first even being prepared to die for others, for the world. Being close to God, knowing that even in those times when we and he feel most pain and most despair, God is there, even if we feel most cut off from him. Jesus felt cut off as he died upon the cross. As we move into Holy Week and then on into Easter, we should concentrate our thoughts and our feelings on the person at the centre of it all. And so let's pray that we will not be fair weather Christians who change with the weather, but followers of Christ who acknowledge that he is there, even if we do not always realise it or feel it. Amen. The hymn 274 encourages us to think upon the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. Sacrifice, you became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I wondered at your gift of life. I'm in that place once again. I'm in that place once again. And once again, I look upon the cross where you. 
And now we turn to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the peace of Jerusalem. For Jew, for Muslim and for Christian. For tolerance and dialogue. For understanding. And let us pray for peace in so many parts of the world where there is no peace the forgotten war in Yemen, continuing strife in Afghanistan, the list goes on and on. And let us pray for the world as vaccines for COVID-19 continue to be rolled out. We give thanks especially for those vaccines that are being done on a cost basis so that the benefits of healing and resilience to COVID can be shared, not just with the rich, but with those who have little. As we approach this Holy Week, let us pray for the church, particularly those churches getting back to having in-person worship for the first time. And let us pray for each other as we adjust and move into the so-called new normal. That we will have confidence to rely on Christ, courage to change what should be changed and keep what should be kept. And so we pray for all those who have lost loved ones.
particularly this week, we remember the family of Roy Hurst. And we pray for all who are unwell, at home or in hospital. And we make all of our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Conscious that even though the churches have in many cases been closed for a number of months, still people have come with their offerings. And so an offertory prayer. O Lord, the giver of all good gifts, in the death and resurrection of Jesus, you have given us the best gift of all, the gift of eternal life. In response to the gift of Jesus, who brings us eternal life, we make our offerings of time and talents, the offerings of our wealth, and all of these we dedicate to his name. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 287. When I survey the wondrous cross,
and our closing prayer. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.